If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. Guitar that was abandoned for two years. Oh, guys, a little fun for me. Um, yep, yeah, early morning on a Saturday. I want to get some things recorded and done for you guys today and hopefully what I'm going to be experimenting with here is going to be helpful for some of you. I have got this, well two of these Mr. X, I got another one back there, Mr. X's guitar necks that we need to do that really complicated inlay with. A few weeks back I did a video on looking at it and I was trying to decide okay do I do an inlay, do I do a really nice decal under there. We've decided we are going to go with inlay. Now the trick is going to be this complicated thing because we have, there's just so many little elements that you got to think about with this. So when I buy actual mother of pearl inlay, about the biggest I can find is one inch wide by two inches long. One of these is what we're going to try and do. And one by two doesn't even cover half of that whole thing. So that means that if we use this material, we need to cut these up into smaller pieces and I just need to do sections. Do you see these like, I don't know, these points, these thin points that come up like that? They start off at the base where they're the widest is about an eighth of an inch and they go up to 1 64th of an inch. That's how narrow they become down there. Now, one, when you're cutting something that fine, uh, obviously it can break very, very easily. It's going to be hard to keep those together and to make that work. And they intersect one another, right? So we've got to figure out how to do that. So now I have got a couple of options that we're going to look at. One is using the actual mother of pearl. Second is what I'm going to experiment with today. So you're going to just see this as an, as an experiment is I bought some of this easy inlay, which is actual mother of pearl, and it's granular mother of pearl. You cut out what needs to be filled in, and then you put these granules of mother of pearl inside it. You kind of overload it a little bit, and you use a super glue or some sort of bonding agent in there, and then you sand it down so that it's flat, and it comes out looking like mother of pearl. No way on earth am I gonna just start off trying that on this actual guitar neck. I'm gonna use this one. This is kind of my, uh, yeah, just kind of a throwaway neck that I'm going to, I will take off these frets. We're gonna try it in this and see how it looks. We've got another option. Paul that gave me these microfiber sanding squares has a small CNC machine. So Paul has put these onto his computer and is going to start to work on making molds of this and then try filling it with liquid, kind of a liquid pearl look or even just white plastic, trying a few different things and see if we can use that to get this. So he's going to CNC these out of the wood, pour in the liquid and then obviously break those out and see what we get for that. Again, gonna be very delicate because these are so small and thin there. It's really kind of a complicated inlay, isn't it? Just, you know, when you start looking at all the fine little pieces. Now there are guys out there that are just masters at, at doing this. I know that, okay? Now I am experimenting. This is art and all that, but I can't put a hundred hours <laughs> into doing an inlay. Mail came, and this box came. We're gonna go open this. I want you to see what this is. Mr. X's sister used to work for Manuel, like the Manuel, the designer 
Manuel out of LA and then Nashville. She's got some of her clothing in multiple museums because they were worn by guys like oh Johnny Cash, Roy Rogers, Dolly Parton, Elton John, The Grateful Dead, Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, George Bush, The Bee Gees, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, <laughs> oh my goodness, John Travolta, Marlon Brando, Burt Reynolds, Raquel Welsh, David Lee Roth, they designed clothes for them. I don't know what I did to deserve this, but uh, it's very sweet that I'm thought of. Marnie, happy birthday. Since the city took your garden, I made you one to wear around. Never button the coat, that is how it's designed. Holy guacamole. Oh my gosh. Isn't that beautiful? On the back too. It's beautiful. How long does that take? Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. The Manuel Collection. Can I, this is incredible. All right. That is beautiful. You didn't even know, but one of my favorite things is a duster when I look at fashion. Honestly, I, I can't imagine how many hours it takes to do it, so it's just beautiful. This is going to be sold for making money to go towards getting wheelchairs over to Vietnam. So you can check out one of my past videos, I think two times past, I did a little bit of a video presentation on this. You can send me a bid on Xander Guitar Build at gmail.com. It might be Tuesday that I stop it. It might be Wednesday. It might be Thursday. The point is, I just want you to put in the, the high bid that you would give. Guys, this is for a charity. It's not for trying to just make a bunch of money for myself. It'll be totally finished. Uh, it will have new, uh, new electronics in it. It's going to be all set up and everything. Watch the story on that if you haven't already. So go back to uh, a miracle guitar video of mine. And that was just like two weeks ago. Check that out. This is not a guitar in which I'm keeping these frets. I would never rip them out of a guitar neck like that if I was gonna try and keep them. These are garbage, so just gonna throw them away. For attempt number one here, I am going to put these decals right on some double stick tape. When I cut this out, uh, that black space has to remain solid wood full size on the fretboard. Uh, so that's gotta stay there. So I gotta be able to get that back in this spot here. Okay, I tried using the double stick tape on the back. What happens is as I go with the razor blade, it starts to gum up and stick to the blade a little bit and pull out my template here. So that's not gonna work. So don't do that. Fail number one. Well, since the double stick tape didn't work, I'm just going to use some frog tape. That should cut much easier. We're going to try the trick that people use. Put a couple dots of glue, of super glue, on one side, and then glue it to other tape. Okay, so we're going to attempt it this way. Way up here, I'm going to do one, because I plan on maybe having to do a few of these here, so I'm not just going to go where I'm going to go on the 12th fret normally. I, I need to put a center line here first, and make sure I got a center line with this as well. Cut these two apart. Well guys, just a reality check as I'm working on this. I've been at this for, believe it or not, almost two and a half hours. And I'm still not done. I've got a ways to go yet. It's so detailed. And it's so hard to get these little lines the way they need to be. And at this point, I'm not even sure yet if when I get this pulled up, if my lines are gonna be good enough in the wood, I'm trying to make marks into the wood so that I can see where I need to cut with my Dremel once I take this off. I'm assuming once these marks are in there, what I'll have to do is I'm, I think I'm gonna use some white paint and paint this in actually on my fretboard so I can see where I need to cut so that I remember, hey, this has to stay, this has to go, this has to stay, this has to go. But if I can pull this off one way or the other, I'm gonna be pretty stinking happy. I don't think it's gonna be very easy to do though. So 
How good or how pathetic am I here? We're going to find out. Whew, this here is a chore. Okay, a little over three hours to get it all cut out. And now I'm going to use paint, or actually primer, just flat white primer. I've kind of covered what I need to here. While that's drying, I'm going to take this black guitar apart now once again so I can start uh, sanding down this finish so I can redo the finish on it. Like I said, I want to make this so like it's like it's brand new again. And then yes, you can look down below at my email address and if you'd like to make a if you'd like to make a bid on this to raise money for taking wheelchairs over to Vietnam, I would really appreciate that. Part of the money goes for me traveling to get those chairs over there and part of it goes towards the actual chairs themselves so it will be a mixture on that uh, but I appreciate it last I have as of right now the bidding was at a thousand dollars but you can look down in the description and see where the bidding is at currently Right in this area, there was just the littlest bit of a dip there, and I'm using this fill and finish by Glue Boost. This is the thick, and then spray this, so you just drop there, spray it a little bit, and then I'll sand that off, and it's gonna fill in just like the rest of the body. Well, I believe this is dry enough now that I can take off the tape. So that's what we see, see what we get here. I'm taking this off while it's, just barely tacky, but it's, see, it's soft enough that when I peel it off, it's not gonna be uh, trying to stick together. But I'll let the whole thing be really good and solid before I try and do any, any cutting whatsoever to get it deeper. There we go, guys. That actually doesn't look too bad, does it? This is just the template that I'm gonna follow, and I'll use the smallest little bit that I have to cut these parts, but then when it gets really fine-tipped, I'll stop before I get to those 100, 164th thick areas, and I'm gonna use a razor blade to cut those out by hand. That actually looks pretty dang good. I'm pleased with that. We'll see. Arg! I got about a fourth of the way through before my $30 down cut bit broke. It was the smallest one because I wanted to get into those fine little points. I didn't think I was putting that much pressure on it, but apparently I broke it. So thankfully I've got some other round tip bits that aren't down cut, but they're also not an up cut. They're more of a, I don't know, it's one of those round headed ones, really teeny tiny. And I got some of those. So I'll try that next. This didn't work, but it's close. I'll show you here. Now, at first glance, you look and you go, wow, that's not so bad. It looks pretty decent, but on close inspection, like, that looks like junk. <laughs> but I think I can do this better. So was this a waste of six, seven hours? No, absolutely not. Why? Because I'm learning. I've done inlays, but the inlays that I've done are like, trapezoid or square type inlay type things. This is complex. This and this is some really fine stuff 
that needs to get done. And there's little tiny pieces of wood that got to stay and all of that. And so um, this is cheap school, you know. The pearl inlay, the easy inlay, doesn't look too bad. But there's a couple things that I think will help. One is I think I'm going to use some of this in my coffee grinder, maybe a mortar and pestle to grind it up so I've got some really fine dust as well as these. These are flakes. They're a little too big for all the places. So if I put in the dust first, like put dust in there and then put the flakes kind of over top and kind of push them into the dust a little bit, it'll still give that same, you know, kind of that same little sparkly pearl look to it. But the dust will fill in areas a little bit better. I think I be, might be able to make this look good, but it's going to take more time. It's going to take some meticulous work, but I think I can do it. Uh, in a past video a long time ago, I made a comment and, and I believe it. And that is, if you think you can do it better, then do it better. And I think I can do this better. Thankfully, uh, the gentleman that's having me do this, Mr. X, he has entrusted me to build these guitars, saying to me, Stephen, we are doing art. And art takes time. So no rush, no hurries. Let's just have fun. That's what he's told me multiple times. So I have taken a while on these because we're trying to figure out how to do this in an incredible way. And I want this to be an absolutely stunning inlay when it's done that people will come up and look at it and just be like, wow, that's awesome. As I thought about this, do you know, you, you can buy like sticker paper, like it's just paper, but it's a sticker for your printer. And so I'm going to print these off on sticker paper and then I will cut them out and then I'll just use that sticker paper to stick it on and then I can spray the paint like I did before and it'll give me a better, clearer, crisper line as opposed to putting the tape together. I stuck those two pieces of tape together with that glue, but when I was cutting, there were little places where I could feel the, the tape move just a little bit and I can't have that at all. And that's what makes some of these places the way they are. So I'm going to get that sticker paper, print some of these on that, and then try it that way. All right, guys. Well, it has been fun. Thanks for watching. And we're learning together, aren't we? So you can let me make the mistakes. You can let me figure it out. And then you'll know how to do it. All right, guys, keep fighting for joy. We'll see you next time.